All right, I turned the grill off a few minutes ago just to let these guys rest. And, oh, uh, what's the matter, Houston? Well, what's up, guys? This is Daniel and Emily from Arms Family Homestead. We got Houston floating around in the background. Mom's here. Everybody's home today. And if you missed our last video of Emily shooting that monster homegrown whitetail buck that we harvested here on our own property, you have to go check that video out before you watch this one. Typically what we'll do, I mean that deer is, is laying behind us. We took him, we field dressed him last night, which means take all the internal organs out. And we took him to a friend and put him in a walk-in cooler. So he's frozen overnight basically. Bear, what is it? Are you concerned? So we went and picked him up this morning. Get back, Bear. So we went and picked Emily's buck up this morning. And typically what I would do is just use my front end loader on my tractor, hang him up in the air and skin him and then quarter him up. However, I loaned my tractor out to a friend, don't have anything here to lift him up. So we're going the old fashioned way today. Now, this kind of takes me back to my roots because this, this very tree right here, <laughs> I grew up skinning deer right here. There's one limb on this big oak tree that's probably hung, I don't know how many deer, how many pigs, a lot of stuff. We're gonna cheat a little bit, I don't have a winch. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take the deer and hang him up by his back legs and use the Kubota sidekick to lift him up in the air and then we can skin him out and quarter him up. And a lot of people were asking on the last video if we were gonna have this deer mounted for Emily and uh, heck yes, we're gonna have this deer yeah. mounted. He's a giant. Everything packed in two coolers. We're gonna leave it on ice. Oh, we'll see you guys in a minute. We'll come. Those are those are the back straps, tenderloins, whatever you want to call them. Mm. But next, we're gonna haul off the scraps. What's left of the body and the guts? We're gonna haul everything off and set a trail camera up and see what all just happens to come in and eat on the gut pile and the bones. Gemma, come on, come on, Gemma, get up here. <laughs> You still on the riding train? Not running today? What? <laughs> it stinks out here. Oh, it is. Mom, you want to pull these guts out for us? I don't like a well. Oh, Bella, get back. Move, Bella. What do you think? Supper? Yeah, for them. For them, not for us. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is going to eat this, Houston? What do you think will come in here? Coyotes. What'd you say? Coyotes. What else you think, maybe? Pigs. Yep. I bet we get some pigs for sure. So I can shoot one. So I love putting out a trail camera, a game camera on a gut pile from when we kill an animal. Just always intrigues me what comes in. And uh, of course you can expect, you know, like 
possums and skunks and raccoons and of course sometimes a bobcat or a fox lots of coyotes usually what eats most of the carcass believe it or not is wild pigs the feral hogs in our area will clean this up when they find it in no time but believe it or not I've, i multiple times in the past i've killed a deer brought the carcass over here in a gut pile put a trail camera up and within 24 hours had three or four different bucks sniffing of the dead carcass it just blows my mind everybody says you know putting something like that out to attract uh, predators or varmints is going to scare the deer off i've had the opposite effect it, it draws deer in actually maybe the ground is just hard So just for reference, this is the old ancient ground blind where Emily shot her buck the other day. And when she shot him, he was out, oh, probably right next to that thicket. And he came from across the field about 300 yards over there. Everyone says, you know, we hunt, hunt under feeder and all that stuff. Yes, there is a deer feeder in this field, but none of the deer were at the feeder at the time. The buck never even stopped at that feeder. He came all the way over here because the does we're feeding on acorns on the ground. All right, Evil Knievel, you ever take that thing off any sweet ramps? Not yet, no. Nope. <laughs> I know some of you guys played uh, Mario Kart on Super Nintendo when you were kids. Now, I'm not talking to the kids now. I'm talking to people my age. We played Super Mario Kart. That's what she reminds me of on this little four-way there is a Super Mario Kart player. Wish I had a red turtle shell. I'd shoot her. Pow! At the turtle shell. Maybe spin her out on a banana peel. Backstrap, that's what's for dinner because, hey, Jesus ate meat, right? So we took the back straps off of this deer and I mean, while we've got everything here and fresh and got a few extra teenage boys coming over to the house this evening to, to help us do some cabinet unloading. All of our cabinets came in for our kitchen. You guys have been asking about the kitchen remodel. That's why my truck and trailer and everything's parked at the house. We gotta unload a bunch of cabinets. So why not feed some teenage boys some back straps? So I'm gonna get this thing uh, and go ahead and trim it up. It's got all this silver skin still on it. The main thing is you've got to get all this, all this connective tissue, we call it silver skin, get all that off there, get the fat off. This was a very fat deer, by the way. And then we're probably going to wrap this in a little bacon and throw it on the grill. So I'm not going to work this thing in the hole in one long piece. We're going to cut it into about thirds. Just easier to work with for me. That's just my personal preference. But now one side looks pretty good, but we're going to trim it up, make it look nice and neat. So we're not gonna go too fancy. I've got two thirds of that back strap here and we're gonna season it with a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna wrap it in some smoked bacon and just throw it on the grill. Now what a lot of people do is they'll butterfly these back straps, open it up, stuff it with some onions and peppers and things. 
we're just going basic today we've got teenagers and kids and everybody coming over that i want to get to see if they'll taste this try it out so we don't want to go too fancy onions and peppers and all that usually scares off the kids unfortunately Look at that bacon. This is the bacon that I bought when we were in Munster, Texas, when we had that that uh, goat process. And I'm telling you what, that is some thick bacon. Ought to do good on this deer tenderloin. Backstrap, as we call it. That's the redneck word. Got the grill heated up to 300 degrees. I really don't want to cook these fast. I'm going to try to cook them slow because it is deer meat there's not a lot of fat content and that's how we put that big old thick bacon doesn't that look amazing mom mm -hmm. that bacon looks awesome all right let's just lay these on the grill and the very most important thing about cooking deer if you ever try to cook deer meat is do not overcook it you want it cooked to like medium maybe even medium rare on the inside because it will dry out and once deer dries out it gets super tough in case you guys didn't know teenagers will make a liar out of you every time so it's now uh almost five o'clock we were supposed to have lots of help here by four to unload all of our kitchen cabinets <laughs> and so far they're a no-show so here's a sneak peek at our kitchen cabinets. We're remodeling our kitchen, if you're not aware. Um, actually, some of these aren't kitchen cabinets. My wife had them build a custom TV stand. And uh, I, there's just a ton of cabinets. I'll uh, take a peep inside the side door of the trailer here. Yeah, can't see much in here. If you notice, there's my tailgate. <laughs> we, so here's the story. We had these cabinets built they're custom built cabinets and that's typically a very expensive process okay however there is a prison here in the state of oklahoma in lexington that has a wood shop and a metal shop and the inmates will build custom built cabinets and custom build a ton of a lot of different things pretty much any woodworking project you need built for the price of the materials if you're a state employee which i am a state employee i work for the highway patrol i didn't tell the inmates when we were there <laughs> that i was a trooper and they were building cabinets for us but i did get a little bit of footage of that the other day when we were there just to show you guys we did go to a a real legit prison to have our kitchen cabinets built so i'll show you that you got an inmate with a tent are you a little bit excited <laughs> yeah I am. Bella, can you pick up these cabinets? Can you help me? So, yeah, eventually we will have a new kitchen. It's all stacked in here right now. Here's a little sneak peek of what our cabinets look like. Uh, my wife picked out the color and everything. She wanted them painted. She didn't want to go stain because, because we do live in a log house. Uh, there's a ton of wood going on. So she wanted painted cabinets and these are painted white with it's like a i know it looks dirty to me i'm like well, why do our cabinets look dirty but it's a a stain to put a stain on there and then wipe it off all slow closed doors and can't open it all the way but slow closed drawers i know most of you don't live in the state of oklahoma but if you do and you're a state employee contact the prison in lexington and they will custom build kitchen cabinets and pretty much anything you need this is going to be a bench seat that's going to go on one side of our kitchen next to a window so i mean some pretty cool stuff the guy that's in charge of the program basically told us i think we spent twenty two hundred dollars don't quote me on that my wife could tell you exactly and the guy that's in charge of the program said they saved us about eight to ten thousand dollars that's the only reason why we have custom cabinets being built so anyways let's go check on our deer back strap wrapped in bacon and so um i was gonna have all these teenagers here to taste test them but i guess i'll just get emily and houston they're out there jumping on the trampoline and i think weston's still around he might have already left 
he's a teenager they're elusive you got to catch them when they're i mean you got to be quick to catch a teenager because they they don't sit still long y'all come try this deer that emily shot if you think you can give me an honest taste test, I don't know if you'll like it. We're wrestling. Hey, what's that? Before you go too far, what kind of shirt you got on there? I don't know. Oh, it's got a deer on it. That's a Kendall Jones. And Emily says future Kendall Jones. I guess Kendall come out with a new line of t-shirts. Yep. So she sent our kids a bunch of merch. Mm-hmm. Go check her out. All right, I turned the grill off a few minutes ago just to let these guys rest. And, oh, uh, what's the matter, Houston? Did you put stuff inside of it? Nope, I sure didn't. Hey, okay, just good. for you, I even said on video, I'm not putting onions and peppers and all that on the inside because the kids won't like it. All right. Watch out so I can put them on that board over there. And, yes, I did wash the board earlier. Oh. Do you think that's going to be any good? No. What? <laughs> yes. It's recording. I know. I'm not sure. Oh yeah. See there. We didn't get it cooked all the way through. It's about oh medium. Maybe a little bit more. It's hot. I know that. It's burning my fingers. All right, catch, clean, and cook. Coming right up, Emily's monster whitetail she shot yesterday. Whitetail? Yeah, that was a whitetail buck. Mm. It's hot. Hot. Why'd you spit it out? I didn't. She got a bite of it. You get a bite. Whew. Oh, um, it's good. I wasn't actually expecting it to be that good, but it's good. Maybe cook it a little more and it'll be a little better. No, we, we can't overcook deer meat because if you cook it too long, it uh, it gets really tough. It's really good. You like it? Mm-hmm. All right, my turn to try it. Let's see. You guys know I'm going to like it because I always, always tell you I do. Wow. That's pretty dang good, Emily. Especially for being very minimal, we didn't cut it open, we didn't stuff it. It's just it's just the tenderloin wrapped in bacon with a little onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper. I'm, I'm impressed, Emily. You shot a good deer. Usually, so most of what we're gonna do with this deer, I didn't really say in the video earlier, you guys saw us hanging the deer. I quartered him up. Yeah, that's a very old, that was a very mature deer. You can see by the trail camera pictures, um, those whitetail bucks, when they get old, they start to, their nose starts to look short. We call it a Roman nose. They get a big nose like a buck goat, like an old goat does. Um, then they they get that real thick brisket. Their neck and shoulders kind of blend together. A young buck will have a long skinny neck. An old buck, that neck and shoulder area kind of blends together. And they get so deep barrel chested that their legs look short. So if you go back and look at those trail camera pictures of that deer, he looked like he had really short legs. Well, that's just because he's a very mature old buck. And when you shoot a, or when you harvest an old deer like that, you know, it's probably best to have most of the meat ground up into ground, ground meat or to slice it for deer jerky, something like that. The steaks on an old deer like that are probably not going to be the best. If you want a good steak off of a, off of a deer, off, you know, to a venison steak, you're probably going to want a younger deer, maybe a doe or a young buck. So... I mean, for the back strap, as far as back strap goes on an old deer, Emily, what do you think? It's better than it usually is. Better than it usually is. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's a win on an old buck like that. Houston, what are you doing here, boy? Well, we're having a kind of a... I can't good. see you, the lighting's... Well, we're kind of having a fire night tonight. Bonfire? We're going to have a bonfire? Yeah. Oh, look. I found an elusive teenager. Hey, you get to try Emily's deer now i'm telling you it's good no, but, but you got to make sure you get a piece with the bacon i get the big piece oh you get a big piece huh oh, that, came that was awful big <laughs> gotta have the bacon with it the bacon is what makes it man i'm telling you bacon is better by itself 
but it is good. It's pretty dang good, isn't it's it? It's really good. Yeah, I was surprised. Emily, you know what Emily said? She, it's better than it usually is. <laughs> you think mom would like it? Because she's pretty picky when it comes to deer. You think so? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, because she doesn't like killing it, killing deer. She doesn't like killing animals or anything. She she doesn't like it. She just hates it. Well, she likes eating animals. Oh, excuse me. She likes eating animals. Yeah, but she doesn't like killing them. She doesn't mind eating goat or cow or fish. Now, fish, she's fine. What do you think? The bacon's amazing, though, isn't it? Yeah. I thought so, too. So, uh... Because we're going to make you're a You're going to have a bonfire. It looks to me like you're making a big pot of soup or something. And when you build... when you If you're going to have soup, you got to build the fire underneath, right? <laughs> Okay, now we're, this is what we're going to use for our bonfire tonight. So it ought to be cool. It'll work, right? We're going to have some people buy some s'mores. We're going to make some s'mores. So, guys, if you like this video, make sure to click the like button, the notification bell, and the subscribe button. And I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace. Go, go.